evening, everybody. Welcome to Brews with Barrett, the official podcast of your Watertown Wolves. We're here at Tully's, 1050 Arsenal Street in Watertown. We're here every Tuesday night, 6 o'clock. Come on down and hang out with some of your favorite Watertown Wolves players. Grab yourself some dinner. Enjoy the show with us here. These things are low, uploaded to the internet on Thursday nights at Live Watertown Wolves Hockey on YouTube. That's where you can find these broadcasts. We want to thank the wonderful people here at Tully's for hosting us every Tuesday night. And of course, our friends at NBC Watertown and the Tunes 92.5 for sponsoring our show. Big weekend coming up this weekend at the Watertown Municipal Arena. Three games, 16th, 17th, and 18th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We are hosting the Danbury Hat Tricks, but it's also First Responders Weekend, the whole weekend. First Responders Weekend on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday night, we'll be honoring the police here in upstate New York. And then on Saturday, it will be the fire departments on that Saturday evening. We will have a game on Sunday as well. But as like I said, 16th, 17th, and 18th. The 16th, we honor the police. Saturday, the 17th, we honor the fire departments. First Responders Night at the Watertown Municipal Arena. We invite you down for that. The Danbury Hat Tricks out of Danbury, Connecticut here for three nights in a row and our chance to gain some points in the Empire Division of the FPHL. Don't forget when you come into the arena, stop at the table on your way and you go through the lobby on your way into the actual arena. Pick yourselves up a game day program. Kind of neat stuff in here. You open it up on the inside. There's a roster for both teams that you can take out for that starting night. You'll get a poster in the middle. I got it upside down. Mike Mercurio is in this one. This is from a few weeks ago. But you'll definitely want to pick that up. Go to the back of it. Hey, look, there's a schedule of all your Watertown Wolves games. You definitely want to pick one of these up on the way into the building. A couple of guys joining us here tonight. Vladislav Pavlov will be joining us out of Chelyabinsk, Russia. He'll be sitting down with us. I hope I can speak Russian. I have to learn really quick here. Uh, Nico Hemming will also be sitting down with us. A couple of young guys making an impact here with your Watertown Wolves. Don't forget, come to the arena for games you can get tickets at showpass.com. If you can't get there, you can watch the games out live, as I said, at Live Watertown Wolves Hockey, brought to you by Steve Weed Productions. But you also want to hit up the Wolves Den. Grab some brand new uh, merchandise in there, really nice shirts like this, hats, T-shirts, uh, hoodies, a whole bunch of different styles of hoodies now for the winter weather up here, some really sharp things. You'll definitely want to look out. You can custom order game jerseys as well. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back here. Tully's in Watertown. This is Brews with Barrett. Low E, also known as low energy, is wreaking havoc on boulders, hobbyists, and frankly, anyone who's a person. I can't even pull out the hose. Thankfully, there's Planet Fitness. A judgment-free zone for that big fitness energy that'll give you a post-workout glow all all day. Now that I have energy, I don't have ball problems anymore. Now I have the energy to swing with multiple partners. No kinks here. Join for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel anytime. Deal ends May 10th. Now I can untangle anyone's hose. Hey, welcome back to Brews with Barrett, the official podcast of your Watertown Wolves. Joining me right now, one of the young guys, he's a long way from home, Vladislav Pavlov joining us. Vlad, I'm not, I'm not even going to pretend to announce your hometown. Oh, my hometown is called like uh, Chelyabinsk, so it's like a really big town. We got like over one million people there, and yeah, we очень очень много народу там живет, так что очень очень хороший город, мне очень нравится там жить. <laughs> so, whereabouts in Russia is that? Are you located in that city? Oh, North. My, my town is actually like a kind of factory town. Got so many factories, like six of them, and they all like all the steel. So you know how to drink here. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, when does the hockey dream begin for you? What what age did you start playing? Oh, I started like at probably three years old. So my dad and my grandpa, so they took me for like for the skate for hockey. But first was like something my health. I have been sick too much with my right. throat in the beginning, so it was just for health. And then I was like, I stopped playing professional hockey, and yeah, that's it. Okay. So I know, like here, kids play 
for their school or whatever, but over there, the programs are a little bit different for ho youth hockey players, right? Oh yeah, it's kind of like you just going to like the hockey school. It's, we call it like, that hockey school. Yes. You, like um, you, like every year, like till you turn 16 years old, and then you go like uh, how's it, major hockey, and then after you go like um, junior hockey. And then like throw it, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right, and you pretty much stay with the same program growing yeah. up. What is yeah. the same team? Goals, you grow with the team. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know we had Alexander like, Gamzatov. It's, like, it's like the build, you build a team like from the beginning, it's like until the end, like all yeah. the same guys. That, that's a great way to build uh, a relationship with your players, yeah, though, and you get used to it. Like so many friends from there, yeah. Yeah. So you do that for quite a while, growing up playing there. Uh, you come to the United States, re you know, early too. You played here and then you went back. When you first came here, you played in New Hampshire for a little bit. Oh yeah, like um, I didn't know what I actually want to do, but I didn't want to play like at the junior in Russia, so I decided to go like to the United States because I was like so many good things about that, and uh, I didn't really know anybody here, so I went to like the showcase in Boston. Right. With the guy, uh, the coach. Like he saw me and he gave me an offer like, for his team, so yeah, sure. Yeah, so like I said, uh, New Hampshire for a couple of years, the USPHL, yeah. uh, junior uh, league over there. Um, and you spent some time with Boston, like you said, you played for a brief time there as well. Yeah. With a neat city, big hockey city. Oh, it's like I love this city, like Boston. Like, yeah, like, you call it England, right? Like New England, That's New I England, yep. Yeah, it's a beautiful area and a yeah. lot of things to do. I mean, my, my, my team wasn't actually in, like, in Boston. It was like 30 minutes from Boston, but like, we went there a lot. Right, yeah. So, like you said, you spent some brief time here. Then you end up going back to Russia, and you played in the MHL over there, yep. uh, Pro League or Junior League. Um, and I, I found this one note on that pretty cool. You played for a Chinese team in Russia. Oh, yeah, there was like... It was like a really good offer from the Chinese team and I really love to be there like but it was like so funny because like with all the guys they like Chinese and we got like one coach like who speak a little bit English. So I was like a translator there. So it was like it was like from Russian to me, they talked to me. I talked to like the guy from the China who knows English like pretty well too. Right. We translate him from English to China. So it was like when Russian, English, Chinese. <laughs> so you weren't only playing, you were facilitating things yeah. in the middle there. Yeah, I was like, not just a player, I was like a translator. Like, I got both. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a neat deal, though. Like you said, you, you know, so you've experienced playing here in the States. You go back over there and play. And I know the games differ a lot when you get on either side of the ocean, you know? Yeah, it's like true because, like, back home, we got, like, bigger ring club, you know that? You yeah. Know, how's it called? Finish, probably, or something? Yeah, because like, it's, like, more, like, more space for hockey. You got, like, you can get some speed and all that stuff, but here's, like, more, like, body play. Yeah. Right. To, like, think faster. That's why I like the American hockey. Yeah, it's wide open. Like you said the bigger ranks are wide open. Yeah. Is it as physical as it is here? Uh, not, not that here. Like, yeah. It's like more skills, like more. Just, yeah. Right. And, then, and a couple seasons in Ukraine playing oh, yeah. professional hockey again, you know. So, like you said, just another experience playing. Oh, yeah. Like, it was like a really, really big experience. Like, cause, like, I didn't know what to go to do. Like, after the like, Chinese team. So, I just had to go to Ukraine because, like, you can't do that. I talked to a couple guys and they said like pretty good level. Right. Yeah. It was good. Right. Like, so big story after the after the seasons. But yeah. <laughs> so you know, like they said, you do that, you go back home for a little bit and play. Um, and then you end up back in the United States and you end up in Watertown, New York. Yeah, that was my plan. I, I wanted to go to the United States back. Yeah. It was like really hard to get a visa, so when I get it, I just go here right away. And I'm right. so happy that I came to the, this really, like, really an awesome organization. Like, Watertown was so, how do you end up in Watertown, though? I mean, how did that come about? Uh, it was like, how I ended up, like, how I came here? Yeah, 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 how did you, you, you come back to the States, you end up in Watertown playing for the Wolves. I mean, you must have known somebody, or... Oh, uh, no, I just talked to, like, to our... Uh, okay. Charlie. Yep. So that, that's why I came, that's how I came here. Yeah. The FPHL, it's a tough league. Yeah, it is. Like, it's, like, a lot of fights. Yeah. I, I didn't expect that, actually, when I came here. Like, <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be like that, but I like that. It's, like, more physical games. Right. So, Watertown, obviously a small, small city compared to where you grew up. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, but like, I love, I love this city, World Town, same as my hometown. So right. I feel like I'm home right now. So. That you that you you got to be comfortable where you're at, right? Yeah, exactly. And like, so many guys like to give me that feeling. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So. We, we've talked uh, with the players throughout the year so far. Uh, the attitude in the locker room, everybody gets along great this year, which is a big help, right? Yeah, it is. Like, everybody just helps. We support each other, and I love that. Right. So uh, we know the regular routine here in Watertown now. Beaker's got you guys on the ice early in the morning, and then you go to the gym, you work out for a little while. What do you do to spend uh, some free time? Oh, some free time? Uh, just... My, talk to my family, my girlfriend, I stop, and uh, just, I really, when I have, like, time, I like to cook for bed, so I got, like, my lunch, my dinner, so I by myself. Right? Yeah. So you like to eat, then you're like me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually eating too much. You're eating too much? I actually live in the they, they can say that. Right. So, do you have a game day routine? I mean, I know guys... They do things uh, like in a certain pattern when you have a game day. Are you like that or? Uh, I do kind of. And like what I do in like game day, I just woke up, go like to the pregame, skate like usually, and then like just come back home and get some rest, maybe like do the nap. Right. Which one I really love. And <laughs> Dinner, and I always when I come with maybe we have like 30 minutes before we came to the ring at home. I play some music. The speakers. Yeah, you like that, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, you know we love having you here in Watertown, man. Yeah. People love seeing you. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much, guys, for like, for fans, organization, and stuff. Like, players and I love to be here guys. Alright well we're headed we're glad you're here man. Yeah thank you thank you so yeah. much. Vladislav Pavlov joining us here one of the young guys that's traveled a long way from home to play pro hockey here in Watertown and making an impact for your Watertown Wolves. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. I walked into Chick-fil-A completely outnumbered. My husband was away at military leadership training and the kids were doing this. Miss Carol brought me water, something to eat, and then before I knew it, she was tying Margot's shoes up and carrying her out to the car. It always makes me feel good if I help somebody. I went in the next day because I just wanted to make sure she knew how much I appreciated her help. I'm just so glad there was somebody there when she really needed it. That's gonna go on my refrigerator. Hey, welcome back to Brews with Barrett, the official podcast of your Watertown Wolves. We're here at Tully's, 1050 Arsenal Street, every Tuesday night. Come on down, hang out with us. Sitting down with us right now, uh, Nico Hemming joining us out of Lakewood, uh, Colorado. Thanks for coming in, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Now, we were joking a little bit about Penzi. Uh, yeah. Brought you in earlier this year, released you for a couple of games, yeah. then brought you right back in. His uh, trying to find a roster spot, and right. how he put it. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Uh, <laughs> I appreciate everything Penner's done for me, to be honest, you know, despite all that, he's given me the opportunity to play pro hockey, and I can't pick him up, to be honest. Yeah, and like I said, he released you, but you've been one of the guys, you've been here anyway. Right. We're trying to, honestly, open up a roster spot, which it's tough to do with 19 now. Right, right. I mean, with those limits, it's tough to do anything, but, you know, we're doing our best. Right. So, are you enjoying your first season of pro hockey, or...? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's obviously a, a bit of a bit of a change for playing college hockey, but I did it for a reason. I'm loving it. Right. So, like you said, uh, you grew up in uh, just outside of Denver, Colorado, yeah. and uh, like you said, we're going to change that on the roster because it says Denver, but you're Lakewood, Cal. So, what was hockey like growing up there? Um, I played about I played double A hockey until I was about 16, just with local rec teams in the area. And then when I was 16, I uh, started playing triple A hockey with a team called Colorado Evolution. And then after that, uh, I played a season of junior hockey as well. I was still in high school in Colorado, up in uh, Steamboat, Colorado. Right. So juniors, you kind of get that that first hint of what the pros are going to be right, like, right. the travel and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I was playing in Colorado, I mean, we only had teams in Colorado, so not much travel in that league. But as I got older and played in some, you know, some other leagues, experience some travel. For sure. And uh, so then, you know, you, you take a shot. You, you went to college for a few years. Uh, University of Central Oklahoma. Yeah. Good hockey program? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you hear the name and some people are like, what's that? You know, but um, 
I think we showed in our in the standings and things like that that we were a, a top team in the ACHA. Um, my sophomore year, we came into the into the season as the number one team in the country. And my freshman year, we lost in the national championship to a team that went NCAA Division One the next year. So it was a it was a good experience for me. Um, a lot of factors went into you know my decision to come here, but I think it was the right decision to make. It. And college hockey is a great atmosphere. I mean, yeah. you get used to the bigger arenas, the bigger crowd. Yeah. Kind of a neat deal, right? Yeah. So, talk with Penn earlier. You're one of the guys that actually literally came through our free agent camp, yeah. um, brought in just for that, and you end up making your way all the way through. Yeah. Uh, so when I was in college, kind of thinking about what I'm going to do next or after college, I. To be honest, I'm sitting there in the living room with the boys watching, you know, Watertown games or just any games around this league, being like, yeah, I can play in this league, and um, just reaching out to people, trying to get my foot in the door, and like you said, Merck was able to kind of get me in contact with Penner and get me to free agent camp, and then from there, I just, you know, did what I could to make the team. Right. So how did, how did you know Mike Mercurio? I mean, he's a Utica kid. He's just an hour down the road, hour and a half down the road. Yeah, yeah. so uh, one of the guys I played with in college, his name's Frank Mundy. He was a, uh, he's a good buddy of Merck's, and um, that's how I made the connection with Merck. How you doing? <laughs> Justin Schmidt just wanted to say hello. He put his head in here. schmidt has got a goal now. He's going to be a star in this league. So you're a goal scorer now. <laughs> <laughs> so, growing up in uh, Colorado, were you an Avalanche fan? or Yeah, definitely. Who'd you look up to on the team? Uh, when I was younger, I was like a big Joe Sackett guy, but you know, <laughs> now, just like everyone, McKinnon or McCarr. Right? Yeah. So you still pay attention to Avalanche? Or Avalanche? Uh, you know, not as much as I did when I was younger, just playing every day, but yeah, I definitely look at the scores and stuff like that, not, not watching as much. But. Right. So what was your biggest shock? Or the biggest thing you've learned playing in Watertown so far? Uh, I'd say the biggest thing, the biggest shock for me is just the, the commitment of the players. Like in college, you get some players that are there for different reasons, right? They're there to get their degree, obviously, number one. But everyone that's here is, is here for the same reason. It's because they want to play pro hockey, right? So I think that's the difference. And I think that's why I've enjoyed this season so much more than I have the last, you know, two years in college that I've spent. I would imagine, and the other thing, like you said, coming to the pro ranks, it, it becomes all about hockey. Now, your right. day is hockey. Right. Yeah. 100%. And I think that that helps a lot with the, the on-ice product. I mean, it, it goes without saying that this level is higher than the level that I was playing last year. And I think there's reasons for that. Right, right. The very the FPHL, very physical league, too. Yeah. And uh, that's one thing I don't know if guys are, when they first get to it, get used to that physicality. Right. I mean, coming from college, I've been, I was wearing a, you know, a full cage for the last two years. Right. Coming to this league and... You know, it's a bit of an adjustment, but it's just you know go back to what you know from juniors and try to try to go from there. Right. Penner was joking around about trying to get you to fight a little bit more. You're a big kid, six yeah. one, one eighty seven. Yeah. According, according to our roster, but right, right. No, I, I think uh, I think Penner knows I'm willing to drop the gloves. I haven't you know had the opportunity as much as I would have liked this year. You know, I think I have. I think I have two fights this year so far, so you know I got no problem dropping the gloves some more for Penner if that's what he wants. Right. So, what's the adjustment like being this far away from home for an extended period of time? Yeah, I mean for me it's not that crazy of an adjustment. I've been away from home since uh, since I was a senior in high school. I've been playing junior hockey, so this is kind of all I know, and this is what I love to do, and I plan to keep doing it, you know, as long as I can, to be honest. Right. So, like I know the the uh, early part of the day is real busy with the ice time, the gym. Uh, Beaker is kind of a He's a driver. He'll push you guys, yeah, right? Yeah. So, I know a lot of the guys just like to go back, chill, watch hockey. What do you do the rest of the day? Yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of downtime in this league. But um, me personally, I'm working on right now. My uh, when I go back home for the summers, I run like a youth hockey camp and a little uh, organization there. We play a couple games against other teams uh, during the spring and summertime. So that's what I kind of am uh, spending my time on right now. Right. And how do you spend your off season other than that? I mean, you get do you hunt fish or? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm a I'm a fisherman, not like some of the guys on this team, but I, I like to go fishing. Uh, my grandpa got me into that when I was younger, so 
you know, that's one of the hot, one of uh, my hobbies. But other than that, in the summer, yeah, just like I said, just working on my uh, hockey camp and just trying to stay on the ice. Right. So we talk about, you know, what age did you actually get started playing hockey? Um, I don't know exactly, but real young. My parents had me had me learning how to skate close to when I was learning how to walk. So right. <laughs> right. Right up there. Did hockey come naturally to you? I mean, was that something you just bought right into? Uh, yeah, believe it or not, when I was younger, yeah, I mean, I, I think I was a natural playing the game, you know, things have, it's a little different to say now as everyone evens out, but I think when I was younger, I was definitely one of the better players and came, came natural. Yeah, we got, a, we got a good group in the room this year, good gang to hang out with. Yeah, for sure, I mean, from our leadership, from Lisa and Lord, uh, Merck, everybody is a, is a good guy, and coming in from college and just being a new guy in this organization have those kind of guys it makes it way easier right? well, we want to thank you for coming and hanging out tonight yeah, appreciate it thanks for having me on Nico Hemming joining us here tonight on Brews with Barrett, the official podcast of your Watertown Wolves. We're going to take a short break here from Tully's. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes. We went to another financial institution for a mortgage rate, and when we brought that to Northern, they said they would either match it or beat it, and they matched it at first, and then they even went lower and they beat it. So we decided to go with Northern for our mortgage. Before we bought this house, we were living separate. So he would drive two hours to come see me in Vermont. I would drive two hours to come see him in New York. Uh, and this gave us a spot in the middle. So we actually get to see each other every day now. Hey, welcome back to Brews with Barrett, the official podcast of your Watertown Wolves. We've had a great night here at Tully's, hanging out with the Watertown Wolves players. We invite you down any Tuesday night. We start around 6 o'clock or so. Got a lot of the players here hanging out. They're having some dinner. They're having a few drinks. Management is here. Ownership as well. Definitely come on down, hang out with us, ask some questions of the players, get to meet them. Uh, we do this every Tuesday night. It's a lot of fun. I want to thank Nico Hemming and Vladislav Pavlov coming in tonight. I want to thank Pav for teaching me a little bit of Russian now that I, I didn't understand a word he was talking about. Big weekend coming up this weekend for your Watertown Wolves. It's First Responders Weekend. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 16th, 17th, and 18th. Friday night, the 16th, we will be honoring the police department here in northern New York. You'll definitely want to come see that. And on Saturday night, the 17th, it'll be the fire departments that we recognize. Jersey auctions both nights. You definitely want to come and get involved with that. Save your pennies up for that one. But first responders weekend, we do have a game on Sunday as well. The Danbury Hat Tricks are here for three games this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 16th, 17th, and 18th. So a big weekend trying to score some points. To get tickets for the games ahead of time, go to showpass.com. You can pick them up right there. Or you can watch the games online at Live Watertown Wolves Hockey. That's also where you'll find your broadcast of Brews with Barrett. So those shows uploaded every Thursday night at 6.30 on our YouTube channel, so you'll definitely want to find that. A uh, couple of shows we got coming up here very quickly as we start to transition towards the springtime. Yes, we're into February, middle of February now, so we're going to be looking at some of the spring activities. We're going to be talking not only hockey, but we're going to talk baseball. Uh, Tyler Weiss, the owner of the Watertown Wolves, Charlie Penn's general manager of the Wolves, they've made a commitment and they have purchased the collegiate baseball team in town, the Watertown Rapids. Uh, Tyler Weiss, you know, he's bought into the community. He bought the Wolves. I don't think he knew much about hockey, but he's got involved with it. He's learning the game, but he's investing in Northern New York. So he bought the collegiate baseball team. Charlie Penn's going to be helping with that as well. So you will have a couple of big shows coming up about that. When you get to the arena, very quickly, you walk into the arena before you head into where the ice sheet is, stop and pick up a game day program. A lot of information in there. There's a mini poster inside that you can grab. There's always stuck right in the middle of it. A game day roster, which I just threw over here, that you can see who's playing that night. This one was against Elmira. So check that out. Pick up your 50-50 tickets. And of course, don't forget, pick up a ticket to try to win a brand new Jeep from Bob Johnson Auto Group. Thanks for hanging out with us on Brews with Barrett. My name is Jeff Barrett, the official podcast of your Watertown Wolves. We'll see you here next Tuesday night. Jeff.